As hard as it is to believe, it wasn't until 1957 that there was a span that connected Michigan's two pieces together. Although it looks more like the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, the Mackinac Bridge was actually inspired by the Brooklyn Bridge. Before the Mackinac Bridge, tourists had to wait sometimes hours to catch a one-hour-long ferry ride just to get to the UP. After the opening, the Mackinac Bridge has made the Upper Peninsula easy access and has helped make the UP a year-round tourist destination. From St. Ignace to Copper Harbor and Sault Ste. Marie to Ironwood, there are just so many things to see in the UP. First and foremost, you notice the intense beauty found all across Michigan's upper region. Today, we're taking a tour through the UP. Before we get started, there are a few UP terms that you should know. Here's Ludington native Chris Merrill to explain. Of course, up there is a, a youper, and I grew up south of the bridge, so I was a troll. And uh, and then, of course, if you're in Michigan, uh, anybody that's outside of Michigan that comes in is then a fudgy. So fudgies are what Michiganders call tourists, and the reason is that the fudgies come to the state because they want to experience the Mackinac Island fudge. And, of course, everybody who's got an extra square foot in their house is trying to set up their own little fudge shop. And so all over, you're going to, you know, Frankfurt to Manistee and uh, Grayling and everywhere in between, there's fudge all the way up to, to Mackinac Island. During the summer months, some ten to 15,000 people a day converge to the island that allows no cars. That's right, no cars. Motor vehicles were restricted at the end of the 19th century, and that ban remains today. Instead, you do see a lot of bicycles. In fact, I highly recommend the 8.2-mile path that takes you around the entire island. M-185 is the only state highway without motorized vehicles in the United States. That makes for a great bike ride, as the circular loop around the island keeps you close to the shorelines. You also don't want to miss the tour of the fort. It was the site for two strategic battles for control of the Great Lakes during the War of 1812. Coast Command, let's get up! Ready! Ready. Alright, well thank you for coming out. The fort developed as an important staging area for U.S. exploration of the northern Michigan territory, including the Lewis Cass expedition in 1832. When the federal government left the island in 1895, all the federal land, including the fort, was given to the state of Michigan and became Michigan's first state park. Visitors can even participate in some of the daily reenactments that highlight what life was like in the 19th and early 20th centuries. The island's listed as a national historic landmark today. Although Mackinac Island and its fudge may be the reason trolls and fudgies alike travel north of the bridge, 
there is just so much more to see in Michigan's UP. The Upper Peninsula contains about 29% of the state's land area, but just 3% of its population. As a result, many areas in the UP look virtually untouched. There are hundreds of sites and attractions to be found in Michigan's Great White North. Michigan's Upper Peninsula boasts over 200 waterfalls and thousands of miles of scenic hike and bike trails that allows one to truly be one with nature. Look at that. We knew that we had to deal with them. So, you know, as, as we got older, you kind of put on a happy face because, I mean, we wouldn't have had our jobs as dishwashers and ice cream scooper, ice cream scoopers if it weren't for them. But you always knew, because I worked at a restaurant a little bit later, and you always knew when the fudgies were coming across from Wisconsin because they'd get on the car ferry, and the car ferry would arrive every night at like 6 p.m., right? And all of a sudden, it was like all hell broke loose. I mean, you had a cruise ship that was docking in a city that had a year-round population of 8,500 people. Our population tripled when the ship showed up. That was it. They were everywhere. And then they were all complaining, we don't have enough transportation. We didn't have taxis. Taxis couldn't they couldn't run anything. There was no Uber back then. So they're out there doing everything. They're walking everywhere, always in the way. These people drove me nuts. And then they all wanted to pick up their own little Michigan souvenirs. Aren't those cute? I've got a Michigan su- Look, everyone, I've got a coffee mug that's got a mitten on it. <laughs> I swear to God, it's a miracle I'm not in prison for just beating the hell out of fudgies. Like once a summer, I could have just put one down. And the thing is is that as a local, I knew where I could hide bodies that they wouldn't find for decades. I still do. There might be one. Right now, there's a family in Chicago still trying to figure out where Grandma went. You know, we went up there back in 91, and Grandma, we haven't seen her since. The damnedest thing. We were all supposed to meet back at the car ferry, but then Grandma didn't show. The car ferry left. We thought she'd just join us later, but she hasn't. Didn't even send a card. The kids are upset. They used to get a dollar every Christmas from her. They haven't had a dollar in a while. Been keeping tabs. They're up to $28 that Grandma owes them. Well, I got bad news. Grandma's under a cottage in Nordhaus Dunes right now. 